NASA is betting big on SpaceX's Starship for one of the most ambitious missions of our time, returning humans to the moon for the first time since Apollo 17, way back in 1972. This mission, Artemis 3, and it's scheduled for just two years from now in 2027. But here's the thing, Starship isn't ready, not even close. The current Block 2 hardware is still struggling through test flights, and the version NASA actually needs for the moon, Block 3, hasn't even flown yet. So the question becomes, what if the future of lunar exploration lies in a spacecraft we already have? Enter Crew Dragon, flight proven, battle tested, and quietly waiting on the sidelines. It's the spacecraft that's been carrying astronauts to space like a pro. But could it go beyond low Earth orbit? Could Dragon really fly to the moon? NASA shelved this idea years ago, but maybe it's time to flip the script. In today's episode of Tech Map, we're diving deep into the Dragon to the Moon concept, from propulsion hacks to lunar landing workarounds. When diving into one of NASA's most controversial and eye-opening programs, it's impossible not to talk about the infamous duo, the Space Launch System rocket and the Orion spacecraft. And trust me, the numbers are nothing short of jaw-dropping. To date, SLS development alone has racked up a staggering $24 billion. Each launch, a mind-blowing $4 billion. And that's just the tip of the iceberg. The infrastructure supporting SLS, like the much-delayed Mobile Launcher 2, has ballooned in cost, with that one project alone possibly costing up to $2.7 billion, way beyond what was originally budgeted. Zooming out, the larger Artemis campaign, which leans heavily on SLS, is projected to cost $93 billion between 2012 and 2025. A massive chunk of that is tied directly to SLS. Now, let's not forget Orion, because it's not looking much better. The Orion spacecraft has already seen around $20 billion in cost overruns. The project continues to be plagued by technical problems, from life support to heat shield issues. What's more troubling is that NASA's own Office of Inspector General has pointed out that Orion's life cycle costs leave out roughly $17.5 billion in related expenses, which conveniently hides the true financial burden. Since 2015, Orion has racked up over $900 million in additional costs. Contracts with Lockheed Martin show $900 million was allocated for the first three Orion capsules and another $633 million for the next three, with annual spending hovering between $1.1 and $1.4 billion in recent years. As taxpayers, it's frustrating, if not infuriating, to see billions of dollars seemingly evaporate into projects that struggle to meet deadlines and budgets. So when the White House's 2026 budget proposal explicitly recommends phasing out SLS and Orion after Artemis III, it's no surprise that public interest, and perhaps even hope, spikes. Finally, it seems like someone might be trying to rein in spending and bring some accountability to space exploration. The new budget plan proposes phasing out SLS and Orion in favor of more affordable commercial options like SpaceX's Starship and possibly Blue Origin's New Glenn, starting with Artemis IV in 2028. This transition also reflects the Trump administration's goal of trimming NASA's budget by $6 billion, cutting it from $24.8 billion to $18.8 billion while still pushing forward with ambitious plans for the Moon and Mars. Part of that proposal includes canceling the Lunar Gateway, a major element of the later Artemis missions. But this shift isn't without its challenges. As promising as Starship is, it still hasn't shown the kind of reliability needed for crewed missions. The Block 2 hardware version has faced issues across its first three tests. And if we're aiming for deep space missions like those to the Moon or Mars, Starship will need to advance to a third iteration, one that includes in-orbit refueling capabilities. That technology, which involves transferring fuel between Starships in Earth orbit, is critical for extending its range 
and making it possible to haul heavy cargo and astronauts to distant destinations. However, developing and validating version 3 capability itself will take considerable time and effort, not to mention rigorous demonstration missions of orbital refueling techniques on it. So, what about Blue Origin's new Glenn? Unfortunately, there's not much to get excited about yet. The rocket has only flown once, and with Blue Origin's slow pace of development, expectations are understandably low. Complicating matters further is the proposed cancellation of the Lunar Gateway, which was supposed to be launched with SLS Block 1B for Artemis 4. Without a gateway, commercial systems would have to handle the entire lunar mission from start to finish, putting even more pressure on SpaceX and any other potential partners to deliver a fully integrated solution. So it's time to embrace the so-called old but gold flight-proven hardware. The matter here is the upgrades to it. Enter SpaceX's Crew Dragon. This spacecraft is a rock star. It's been ferrying astronauts to the ISS like a champ. It's got a dry mass under 10 tons, 50% more room than the Apollo capsule, and it's already nailed docking maneuvers, like when it shuffled ports on the ISS in May 2024. But here's the big idea. Launch Dragon on a Falcon Heavy, or even two Falcon 9s. One for Dragon, one for a propulsion module. They dock in low Earth orbit, just like NASA's Gemini 8 did back in 1966, when Neil Armstrong pulled off the first ever orbital docking. From there, Dragon zooms to the moon, either staying in lunar orbit or linking up with a lander for a surface mission. No SLS, no billion dollar price tag, just pure SpaceX ingenuity. With Dragon docking to a propulsion module in Earth orbit, you don't need a gateway. The propulsion module gives Dragon the kick to reach lunar orbit, where it could meet a pre-positioned lander, maybe even one delivered by Starship. After the crew does their moonwalking thing, they hop back to Dragon for the ride home. It's lean, it's fast, and it's way cheaper than SLS or even building a whole lunar station. But can Dragon really handle the moon? Okay, let's be real. Dragon's built for low Earth orbit, not deep space. To go lunar, it needs some serious upgrades. First, propulsion. Dragon lacks the delta V to get to the moon and back, so that propulsion module is critical. Second, the heat shield. Dragon's Pika X is great for ISS re-entries at 7.8 kilometers per second, but lunar re-entries hit 11 kilometers per second cooking the shield at much higher temperatures. SpaceX would need to beef it up, and that's untested territory. Third, radiation shielding and life support need tweaks for deep space travel. Think extra water layers or composites to block cosmic rays. Oh, and here's a kicker. Falcon Heavy isn't human rated yet, meaning SpaceX would need to jump through NASA's safety hoops. Former NASA boss Jim Bridenstein even said modifying Dragon might make it look like Orion, NASA's deep space capsule. So it's not a slam dunk, but it's doable. So how could Dragon fit into NASA's lunar plans? Let's explore two awesome concepts. Option 1. Hybrid mission with Starship. Imagine this. Dragon handles the crew, launching on Falcon Heavy or two Falcon 9s, docking in Earth orbit, and zipping to the moon for short missions. Meanwhile, Starship, the beast with over 100 tons of cargo capacity, delivers habitats, rovers, or even water mining gear to build a lunar base. It's a tag team approach. Dragon gets astronauts there fast, while Starship sets up a permanent moon camp. Together, Dragon and Starship could make Artemis a reality without SLS and skipping the gateway keeps things simple for early missions. Option 2. Emergency Backup Plan What if Starship's not ready? It's still in testing, and those Raptor engines and heat shield tiles are tricky. If SLS gets canned and Starship's delayed, Dragon could be NASA's lifesaver for Artemis. Launch it with that propulsion module, dock in orbit, and send astronauts to the lunar surface with a lander. It's a quick fix to keep NASA on schedule leveraging Dragon's proven track record and Falcon 9's affordability. This is clearly a cost-efficient option, 
Dragon's development cost was $1.7 billion. Peanuts compared to Orion's $23.7 billion. No gateway needed, just pure hustle to get boots on the moon. Why is this such a big deal? SLS and Orion are bleeding cash. $4 billion a launch and $24 billion in development. Dragon and Falcon 9 are a fraction of that, and SpaceX has a knack for making things work fast. Skipping the gateway could shave years off the timeline, getting us back to the moon sooner. Plus, Dragon's docking skills are rock solid, and we've got 50 years of NASA docking know-how from Gemini to lean on. Whether it's a hybrid mission with Starship or a clutch backup plan, Dragon could keep the Artemis dream alive and prove commercial space is the future. In addition, given a flight-proven Dragon vehicle, we can investigate other concepts, such as, first, crewed lunar mission with Dragon. SpaceX adapts the Crew Dragon spacecraft, originally designed for low Earth orbit, for a lunar flyby or landing mission. The concept could explore how Dragon's compact design, life support systems, and heat shield are modified for deep space travel, including radiation protection and extended life support for a lunar journey. Second, Dragon as a lunar lander. Instead of Starship's all-in-one approach, Dragon serves as a dedicated lunar lander, launched by a Falcon Heavy or another heavy lift rocket. The concept could involve a modular lunar mission architecture, with Dragon docking to a separate propulsion module, focusing on cost efficiency and rapid deployment. Third, commercial lunar tourism. Dragon is used for private lunar missions, carrying wealthy tourists or researchers on circumlunar trips. This could highlight SpaceX's push for commercial space travel, with Dragon's proven reliability making it a quicker-to-deploy option compared to Starship's ongoing development. Fourth, scientific payload delivery. Dragon is repurposed to deliver scientific instruments, rovers, or sample return systems to the lunar surface. The concept could focus on a stripped-down, uncrewed Dragon variant, optimized for cargo, leveraging its existing parachute and propulsive landing capabilities for precise lunar touchdowns. So what do you think? Can Crew Dragon steal the show and get us to the moon without SLS or a gateway? Drop your thoughts in the comments. I want to hear your wildest space ideas. If you love this deep dive, smash that like button, hit subscribe and ring the bell. We're aiming for 150,000 subscribers, and we need you to get there. Check out our other videos on Starship, Artemis, and more. And let's keep exploring the cosmos together. Until next time, stay curious and keep looking up.